this is David. Today I'm going to talk to you about a concept that's pretty simple, but very important inside of Microsoft Azure, and that is a resource group. Now, so many of the videos in this series, I've talked about resource groups, and I've created them kind of on the fly in the process of creating some other resource, but I'm going to show you right now how to actually create a resource group just by itself. Here at portal.azure.com, I click on create a resource, and I just type in resource group right there. There it is. And then create. I'll give it a name. I'll call it GCast RG in this case. It has to be unique. Tell it where it's going to be. And it's kind of funny because um, I'm not sure how important it is <laughs> where you actually store this resource group because you're allowed to place things in this resource group that are not in the same region as this resource group. But typically, um, I'll put it close to me or close to my users or close to where the resources are that they're going to be using, things like that. I'll take that into account. The same thing I do with just about anything else. And that was really, really fast. It's already done. Go to resource group right here. And here it is. Uh, so what can we do with this? Well, we can add things to it. So I click on add. You can see right here would list where all the things that are in this research group. Currently, there's nothing. I'll click on add, and maybe I'll add, I don't know, a, uh, uh, a web app right here. And put it in that resource group, give it a name. I'll call it GCast Web App. Select a runtime stack, that's fine. Uh, .NET Core. I don't have to, as I said, I could put it into Central US, even though the resource group is East US, but I'll put them all together. Select all the defaults right here. And I can just put things into here. I could put functions and databases and Oh, cognitive services. Oops, got to click one, create one more time. Right here, submit it all, and it'll get created in there. And that's uh, pretty much it. Now, there's a couple reasons why you would create a resource group and put things into it. One is it's just a logical grouping. And so if you've got things that work together, like imagine this ASP.NET's uh, web app has, uh, you can see that it actually has a, a few things on here, like it's there, we have... Um, that are dependent on it, they're automatically created. Here, let's go to that here. Web app, and up there is the resource group. So for example, I have a, an app service plan. It, they, sh they logically should be in the same resource group, and in fact they are. If it accesses a database, it makes sense for that to be in the same resource group. Maybe it accesses SQL Server and Cosmos DB. Maybe there's some functions that interact with it. Whatever, it makes sense to put them in there. And the reason is because I can create this, I can open this thing up, and I can see everything that's there and it gives me an idea of oh this is my this is my project this is my application this is my this is what I'm working on it puts it all in one place and that's kind of nice another thing you could do is that if you get done with this like for example when I do a demo for this show a lot of times I'll create a sample application and it might have several things to it and I don't want to go through and delete them one by one. I can just come in here, open up the resource group, and delete the resource group. And because this is such a destructive thing, it forces me to type in the name of the resource group before it enables that delete button right there. I'm not going to do that right now because it's kind of destructive. Another thing I could do is I can move this resource group. So if I wanted to, for example, merge two resource groups together, I can move it to another one like this, just select some other resource group, or just create a new one, which is essentially renaming that resource group, call it create new gcast2rg, like that, and go through it like that, and I can add some things to it in the process. Say some or all of those things like that and move it into another resource group. I'm going to cancel this. Just want to show you that's possible. And then this might be really interesting. I want to move it to another subscription. This didn't used to be possible, but it's very cool. If you have multiple subscriptions, you can actually change, move things from one subscription to another, which might be really important if you wanted to hand off something to a customer or change the way that you're billing or whatever. That's a very powerful tool that you can use with resource group. And finally, 
one thing that's really nice is the, the option to create an Azure Resource Management or ARM template for automating the creation of all of the resources within a resource group. And if I go down to the blade for export template right here, it'll actually generate that template right here. And these are ARM files which say, okay, these are the things that I want to create, create and then you can create the resource group and use either PowerShell or CLI then to deploy these same assets and maybe change the parameters, get them different names, different locations, whatever you need to do then to create that. You can add that to your library, you can download it as separate files, either way. So resource groups are a very powerful tool. We use them all the time, and I thought it would be time to actually talk about why they are important. This is David. Thank you for watching. Thank you.